Let's talk about the Sarazen Soul and what that means to everybody out there that's played this game for so long. Okay. Gene Saracen invented the uh, bounce soul contour in 1931. Uh, that, of course, is the, the big bounce that hangs off the bottom of most conventional sand uh, wedges. And it also raises the leading edge significantly, okay? Uh, it, it's been the best we had for the last 80 years. Uh, it, clearly, the OEMs that are out there competing aren't really giving it much thought because if you look carefully at the sand wedges that are out there in the marketplace right now, they're pretty much just one rendition after another of the same Gene Saracen sole contour improvement. What I was after when I did this was I was trying to lower the leading edge and still preserve the bounce uh, properties of the of a sand wedge and try and make it a lot more playable. And uh, through four iterations now of the product development, I've been able to do that. What's really wrong with the Saracen wedge is two things in particular. The first is the, the dangerously raised leading edge that comes from the bounce contour when it's on the the playing surface, the leading edge is about a quarter of an inch above mm -hmm. the, the playing surface. Uh, and the mass that is placed low and forward on that golf club that create that bounce uh, surface contour is in exactly the wrong place for a wedge. The, the mass needs to be higher and more rearward in order to increase the moment of inertia and the stability in the club head and increase the ball spin rate. So, the Saracen sole contour is so helpful in sand play is really your worst enemy in the other 80% of the short game that's there. And wedge the play has changed so much over the years. Nope. I mean, back in the day, people thought, okay, I'm going to use a wedge and I'm going to be in the sand. Yeah. Today, there are many uses for these utility clubs, as oh, you yeah. call them. Yeah. But it, most people think, ah, you know what, it's just a wedge. It's just a wedge. I, I need a couple of them in my bag. Yeah. No sirree, correct? Not at all. That, this is where you save your strokes and make your scores, is with short game play. Any, any, any accomplished player is uh, very careful about the kind of wedges that they're playing and how well they practice. And you'll, you see PGA Tour players, you're around them a lot more than I am, but the amount of short game practice that they commit themselves to far exceeds what normal amateurs really think they probably mm -hmm. do or should do. So. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity there in wedges. It's, uh, it's a far larger part of your game than you think it is in terms of the number of scores or, or strokes that are committed to a average round of play. You can make an argument, pretty strong one, that it is the most important part of the game yep. because it is the scoring part of the game. Yep. Sure, you've got a whole putts, but you've got to get the ball on the green. And most people don't hit 18 greens in regulation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are even holes, and, and I can remember one or two in my past as well where I've hit two wedge shots on the same hole. Mm -hmm. You ever hit the one that goes across the green and then you got the wedge over there and hitting it back to the green again. So uh, there's a lot of wedge play in an average round of golf and nowadays it's even more. There's a lot more focus on the short game with the, the, the current uh, golf being more of a bomb and gouge type of game. Right. Uh, drivers going farther is putting a lot more emphasis on the short game. Glad you talked about some of those changes. The USGA, as everybody knows, has basically changed the rules recently. This is, in a way, a reset button, if you will. You're trying to give everybody out there the shots back that they've lost because of the rules change. Exactly. That's it's. This is a lot about versatility, but in 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 the large part, it's about recovering for that amateur and more accomplished player as well the loss of spin that he's suffered from the new USGA rules that came out a couple of years ago. A lot of players are still quite legally playing old square groove golf clubs and they're not really sensitive to what these changes are up to this point. But at some point all of those guys are going to go into so-and-so golf shop and look to replace their wedges. And when they do, mm -hmm. the only thing they're going to have available to them are these new generation wedges with a lot smaller grooves. And there's some of them that work and some of them that work a lot better. And this is, this is one that works a lot better.